This is week two of the spring trimester. I'm Jennifer Marie and this is my Atelier Diary. This trimester so far has been just like the ups and downs of painting. I feel like my afternoon project working on my cast painting has mostly been ups which is awesome but my morning session working on the figure has been a lot of downs but then it started going up at the end of this week which is great. So the figure session of the day I've been working on the pose of Emily and this pose has been really challenging for me. I'm doing something different. When I start a figure painting, I usually start out doing a week of a transfer drawing, which I'll transfer the drawing onto the canvas. This time, however, instead of it being a five week long pose where I have time to do all that, this is a two and a half week long pose. So instead of doing a transfer drawing, I'm drawing directly onto the canvas with charcoal, which is something very new to me. And I'm finding it's hard for me to be as precise as I am when I'm working on paper. So it's just been, um, pretty challenging for me this time to capture the gesture and the proportions of Emily, but I really want to get good at doing this. So last week what I was doing was I drew on the canvas and started the painting, and at the end of the last week the proportions were pretty off. It just didn't look like the model's body type. Emily is pretty tall and also thin, and in my painting it just looked like a shorter person and a whiter person. So starting this week, on Monday what I did was I was analyzing the whole figure and seeing that the proportion of the head in my painting was pretty off. It was too big. So the first thing that I did was I made the head smaller, which making the head smaller gave me room to make the shoulders more narrow, which gave me room to make the hips narrow. And so I could just make everything more narrow. So then she was starting to look thinner, which makes her look taller, which was closer to her body type. So next time when I'm having problems getting the body type of the figure, I think the first thing I'm going to do is look at the head size because at least for this painting that really dictated all of the, the widths of the proportions. So the next day I was analyzing the painting and seeing, looking at my painting and seeing what the farthest thing was on my painting compared to the actual model. And the thing that was most off was definitely the hips and the legs, so I really focused on correcting those aspects. The first thing I did was I looked at the hips and made sure that the angles of the hips were going in the right direction. And then once I felt like I had the box of the hips correct, I really worked off that. So I went to the standing leg because that's going to be holding most of the weight and the tension in the figure. But while I was doing the standing leg, I was making all of my lines and comparisons off of the hips. So for example, I have the hips going like this and I was looking at the side of the body on the left, so the left hip, and then I would compare that angle with the front of the knee on the standing leg. So these gave me two angles and two points that I could look at and really make sure that I really got that locked in. And so once I got the angle of the hip to the front part of the angle of the knee, then I would go down and work on the ankle of the standing leg. So I feel like once you get those three aspects, the hip, the knee, the ankle, and make sure that those are all working right and it looks like they're holding weight and tension of the body, then the other things like working on the calves and the thighs, it's kind of just filling in as long as those three parts, the hip, the knee, the ankle are all locked in. And then I went over to the bent leg and this time I was looking at both of the, the box of the hips comparing the front of the knee again of the bent leg to the front of the knee on the standing leg. So I was really looking at those four points, the two hip angles, front of the knee of the bent leg, front of the knee on the standing leg and just kind of moving things around until those four things look solid and then the same thing then moving down from the front of the bent knee to the ankle and really comparing all those to all of the points then, so the two hips, the two knees, and the two ankles. And making sure that all of those points were as solid as possible, making sure that they made as much sense as possible, and then I started to fill in the other lines like the calves and the thighs. And then on Wednesday and Thursday, unfortunately, Emily had some health issues, so she wasn't able to model those two days, but she's doing better now, and so she came in on Friday to model. So how I started each day is I look at my painting compared to the model in the pose and see what the farthest thing from nature in my painting is. So I was happier now with the bottom half of the painting and I felt like that was the strongest part now compared to the top half. So then I started to really focus on the top half to get that as strong as her legs. And so 
Since I was basing everything yesterday off, firstly off of the angle of the hips, that's what I did for the top part of the body. I went from the hips and made sure that the shoulders were aligned with the hips how they should be proportionately and also gesture that they were um, positioned over the hips in the right way. And once I felt like I got the shoulders right, then I started to work on the rib cage, which basically just working down and making sure that the armpits and then where the, the points of the hips go in on a female, especially where the, the end of the rib cage is really obvious. So I was making sure the, the waist, armpits, and the shoulders all made sense. And then lastly, working with the upper part of the body, I made sure that the shoulders compared to the elbows made sense. And so once I was happy with all of that, I started to work on some more details, like I added the breasts in, and then I also added the portrait in of Emily. So this painting really was a struggle for me at the start of it, and I was really frustrated <laughs> definitely with it because I felt like just getting the gesture and the proportions was so tricky for me, and it was just a lot of kind of destroying everything and building it up again to try and get it as close as possible. Now I'm feeling a whole lot happier with the gesture and proportion with it. So I have two more days to work on it, Monday and Tuesday of next week. So I'm definitely gonna be correcting the proportions and gesture even more as I can, but then also working on color a little bit and value, value first then color, but um, the colors are looking a little bit muddy because I kind of threw that out the window as I was just trying to correct proportion. So in the last two days, I would be really happy if I could get the colors looking more clean, I guess, not muddy, and then just get the gesture and proportions as absolutely accurate as possible. And now for my fun cast project. This has been going really, really well. I had a really solid transfer drawing, so I feel like starting this painting has just been going really well without really any bumps in the road, which is awesome. So to recap this process, so once last week what I did was I transferred the image from the transfer drawing onto the canvas, and I really, this whole time I've really just been working with the shadow shapes. So the first thing that I did was I painted in the shadow shapes with a really, really light wash of the shadow color. And so then at the end of the week, last week, what I was doing was putting a little bit more paint down. The shadow colors are still relatively light, to what they're gonna be, but darkening it still so I could get a more clear picture of the light shape and the shadow shape. And Monday of this week, I finished doing that, darkening a little bit, all of the shadows. So come Tuesday, what I did was I put a light tint down on the light areas because the imprimatura of what I have is kind of gray, and the cast is actually pretty yellow, yellowish brown. So I really want to ref start reflecting that in the painting, even though I'm still just working with the shadow shapes. I just took some a yellowish color and put that all in the light area. So the painting is looking closer to nature, how it actually does look in life. And then what I started doing once I got all of that finished is I started putting down a really good solid shadow color. So I'm trying to now get it as close to how the shadow color actually looks. So before I was using uh, more dry brushing the shadow on so the colors were pretty light so now I'm using a little bit more um, terp and medium into the paint so the paint's going on nicer and I'm making it more colorful how the shadows actually are because some of the shadows are really dark and then some of them have a lighter look to them because they just have this more glowing golden look to them so I'm trying to reflect that as I'm putting the paint down and like I said I'm just trying to get the shadows to be as dark as they actually are. This process is taking longer than I thought it would because I'm trying to make the shadows look as accurate as possible. Um, also the shadow line because that's really important so I'm trying to make it look like it gets as soft as where it should be as it goes out into the darker half tone and then also a sharp or as soft as it needs to be. So I'm really working with the shadow color, the darkest half tone also, so I can blend that out into the lighter area. And I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. I think it's looking pretty convincing with getting those shadow shapes in. Um, I wanna make sure that I'm moving along with this painting though. Um, so I'm gonna try and give myself the goal to get all the shadow colors in nice and dark how they actually are by the end of this coming week. And then for the extras during the week, this is my pencil drawing that I did on Tuesday evening. 
the model was Delon. Wednesday evening, we had anatomy and we talked about the skull and the muscles that are on it. Thursday, I decided on the size of this master copy that I'm going to be doing. This is the master copy that I'm going to be doing is the Samson painting by Solomon J. Solomon. This is a really amazing painting and there's a painting that I want to do probably, I hope I can do it within the year or next year that has that swirling composition of a lot of figures with like all this tension there. So that's why I want to copy this painting and try and see how Solomon J. Solomon did it. And this is me standing by the stretcher bars that Matt helped me make. This is definitely the biggest painting that I've ever done. I believe, or that I'm going to be doing, I believe the size, I think it's eight foot by five and a third feet. And it won't be up tall like that. It'll be on its side. But hopefully next week I can stretch it and get some linen on there. And then on Friday I framed my transfer drawing of the cast, which turned out to be um, a lot more challenging than I thought it would be. The charcoal that I used is mostly vine charcoal on it, so vine charcoal is more powdery than the neutrum charcoal, which I usually use. So it's kind of easier for if you rub up against it, the charcoal is going to come off really easily. So. I had to correct some of the spots where that happened um, by putting the drawing back up on my easel and reworking some stuff, but now I have it behind glass, which feels really good, so now I know that it's protected. 